welcome to this fourth advanced Blitz Plus tutorial by Orange Moon Network. In this tutorial, I'll be continuing on with the RPG game. If you've already made a map like this, which you can move around with the arrow keys. However, um, you can go out of the boundaries and there's no character. So in this tutorial, we'll be setting up boundaries so you can't go outside the map and we'll have a character which can run around. But first of all, to make calculations of the boundaries easier, I will set up some variables for the graphics, as well as I've done before for various sizes of the different tiles and how many tiles there are. I'll do this for the screen size as well. So I'll have a variable, which will be the very start of the program, called screen x. And this will be 640. And then I'll have one called screen y. This is 480 and then I can change the graphics to screen x, screen y. So this will help with calculations so you don't have to put in 640 and 480, you just put in the variable. But also it's useful if you want to change the size of the graphics. So say you want to use 1024 by 768, that will still work and the calculations should still work as well. But I'll stick with these graphics for now. And first of all I will draw the character because when I want to set the movement around the screen with the boundaries I want it to be a classic RPG style where when the character's in the middle of the screen the background moves but when you get up to one of the edges then your character can move to the corners of the screen so you're not always stuck in the middle but you are for the most part and it's the background that moves um, I hope you understand that if you don't then it doesn't matter you'll see what it means later I think it's like this in classic Zelda and Pokemon games. So first we've got to draw the image. So let's open paint which I've used before, you can use whatever software you want. And I've got a 50 by 50 but it doesn't matter and we're going to use variables for the size of the image anyway so it will work in the game. So, But what you need to do is make sure the background is black, so fill the background black and that will mean that that will be transparent in Blitz. Blitz by default sets the background as black. So don't have any parts of your character being black or it will be transparent. So we filled the background in black and now in here draw your character. And for when we animate it it's useful if you draw a rectangular border I'll do it in red around the outside to make it obvious that this is a long frame because later we'll have lots of frames for animating the character but that will come later so we'll just do this one frame so it's just a single picture and now draw your character in here so once you've drawn your character which I've just quickly done here it's nothing special uh, I'm not a very good artist but there you go once you've done this it's important that you make sure that the character fills up the entire screen so what I will do is I'll select all control A and then move the character to the top left like this and then drag the borders so the character's full screen. I'm just leaving a one pixel border on the outside and I can still have the frame in red on the outside. And now save this and make sure it's in the same folder as your blitz file and now we'll put it after all the tiles we will load the character so global char which just stands for character you can call it character if you want but it's easier to write it's just four letters and we'll do load image and then char.bmp which is what I saved my image as in the same folder as a bitmap file and then we will have a variable for the <laughs> image width and height and we'll call them char width and char height and now if you go back into paint and the image attributes and find out what the width and height are so mine's 25 by 39. So 25 and 
39, it's important we get this right for when we do all the um, collision based programming later. And then we're going to set an X and Y position for this character. Obviously, this is going to be a variable so we can move them around. I'll just call them char X and char Y. And the reason that we've one of the reasons why we gave the variables to the graphics is also so that we can easily calculate the center of the screen. So we're going to put the character in the center of the screen. So to do that for the char x, it would be in brackets this calculation screen x divided by 2. That's what the slash is there, forward slash, that means divide by 2. So halfway along the x axis, but then it would draw the left part of the image in the centre of the screen, so it wouldn't be exactly in the centre. So then we'll just move it along by half of the width which we've set here, which is one of the reasons why we made it into a variable. And then we'll do the same for char y. Screen y divided by 2 minus char length divided by 2. Or in fact, I called it I'll just call it length here. Sorry. Um, in fact, I can show you the difference. I'm not sure it'll be very visible, but I'll just put some semicolons here so it's just notation, just notes, so it won't execute that because it's gone green. And now, sorry, um, <laughs> I have to draw the image first so I can show you the difference. So. Let's go ahead and create a new function called f draw char. This we have to draw in the tiles because we want it to go on top. So function f draw char and function. And now we simply put draw image char char x comma char y. And I've shown you this before, so it shouldn't be anything confusing. So here you see it's not this is where the cursor is now, that line there is the centre of the screen and this is the centre of the screen, but the characters drawn from the top left is in the centre of the screen, so the rest of it's slightly off. So then when we take away half of the image height and width, now it's in the centre of the screen. I don't know if you saw that but anyway now when I move the character around you see the background's moving. However, what I want to happen is when you get to the corners, which, and you shouldn't see this black, but anyway, when it gets to the corners, I want the background to start moving and then the character to move. And that is what I will be doing now. And unfortunately, I've just realised this video is already eight minutes long, and all we've done is create the character. Uh, so, so sorry about that. I will do carry this on the next tutorial when. I will have the character moving around properly. So thank you for watching this and check out my next tutorial.